Welcome to our review on forces and interactions. The first thing we need to know then is what Newton's third law actually states. And Newton's third law states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So what this is talking about are interaction pairs of forces. So what we find is when objects interact with one another we get pairs of forces arising and in that interaction pair each force acts on a different object, the forces are the same size and type, and the forces act in opposite directions. The first type of force we're going to consider are the non-contact forces. Non-contact forces are the forces that are produced because an object is in a field. So for that force to act, the objects don't actually need to be in contact or touching each other. When we're talking about a field, we're referring to a region where an electrical charge, magnetic material or mass experiences a force. And we've got three examples of non-contact forces we need to remember. Electrostatics, magnetism and gravity. So those don't have to be in contact with each other for those forces to be experienced. So you don't have to have a magnet actually touching a piece of metal to get the force of magnetism. It just has to be within its field. Now, when we're looking at these, electrostatics will both attract and repel. Magnetism is attract and repel, but gravity is purely an attraction. So gravity only attracts. When we're considering forces, they're an example of a vector because they have not only a magnitude, but also a direction, hence vector. When we come to draw a force, we will represent them on diagrams by a force arrow. And remember, the length of the arrow represents the size of the force, and then the direction of the arrow is the direction the force acts in. So if we're drawing a force arrow for a non-contact force, we usually draw those from the center of the object, as I've shown you on the football beneath, with gravity acting from the center of the object. The other type of force we could have are the contact forces. Now contact forces only act when the objects are actually in contact with one another. And when we come to represent a contact force on a diagram and we draw the force arrow, then they're drawn from the point of contact. In the table, I've given you some of the key examples of contact forces the interaction pairs they generate and the mechanism that produces it. I'm not going to talk you through all of them because you can read those yourselves if you hit pause, but I'll take you through a couple just to give you the idea. So if we consider friction first of all as a contact force, our interaction pair is the force of the box on the surface and then the opposite, because our interaction pairs are always opposites, is the force of the surface on the box. The mechanism that produces our friction is all down to the fact that we've got these atoms that make up the surface of the box and the surface itself, and those atoms will interact when the rough surfaces slide over each other, which generates the friction. Second one on there, drag. We could have an example of a leaf falling, for example. So our drag would be the force of the leaf falling on the air and the force of the air on the leaf. So opposite directions again. And the reason that we get that, our mechanism, is that the particles of our liquid or gas are colliding with the object and the object is pushing them away. So obviously, pause the video, have a little read through of the other three examples I've given you there, but make sure that you do remember that when we're talking about an interaction pair, then it's always going to be a force acting in one way and then the opposite for the other one. Hopefully at the end of this video you can recall examples of ways in which objects interact. You can describe the difference between a contact and a non-contact force and give examples of where we'd see these. And you can also recall Newton's third law as being for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction.